Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, March 25th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Obama's worried about loose nukes in New York. Then, a student is suspended for shaving her head in solidarity for her friend battling cancer. And a Rhode Island state senator keeps it classy with the Kraken Dan Bedondi. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Russia's actions are a problem. They don't pose the number one national security threat to the United States. Uh, I continue to be much more concerned when it comes to our security with the prospect of uh, a nuclear weapon going off in Manhattan. Well, that was Obama during a press conference in the Netherlands today answering the question, does he believe Russia to be America's number one threat? Well, Obama said that he is more afraid of Manhattan getting hit with a nuke than any supposed threat posed by Russia. He didn't elaborate, mind you. So if the Obama administration doesn't think Russia is going to nuke the U.S., then who will? North Korea has nuclear weapons, but none capable of traveling the 9,000 miles. Iran doesn't have nuclear weapons, nor do they possess a missile that's capable of striking the U.S. Now, after the 9-11 attacks, the government and various commentators told us m on multiple occasions that al-Qaeda has planted nukes around the U.S. and will kill millions, destroy the economy, and fundamentally alter the course of history. But with all that fear-mongering, that turned out not to be the case. An anonymous intelligence official told CNN in 2010 that developing a nuclear device involves a highly sophisticated technical process and Al-Qaeda doesn't seem to have mastered it based on what we know now. And a top U.S. officer said today that China will likely have submarines equipped with long-range nuclear missiles by the end of the year. Now, this was according to the head of U.S. Pacific Command, Admiral Samuel Locklear. He said the latest class of Chinese subs would be armed with a new ballistic missile with an estimated range of 4,000 nautical miles. The government officials have even been ramping up this nuke threat in recent weeks, saying the missing Malaysian Flight 370 could have been hijacked by terrorists who will then turn that plane into a nuke that will hit the U.S. So we've got all these conspiracy theories swirling around, but apparently Obama does not consider Russia a threat to the U.S., even though Russia has 45,000 nuclear weapons and a very sophisticated ballistic missile system. He doesn't want to give Putin any credit. But where are they getting this nukes on the loose scenario? We have told you on multiple occasions how false flags are always preceded by drills. Well, while at the nuclear security summit, Obama helped plan a little interactive nukes on the loose war game that would be played by world leaders. David Cameron joined Barack Obama, Angela Merkel, Xi Jinping, and other world leaders in this nuclear war game. It was played out by actors in a series of short films where a terrorist attack with an atomic dirty bomb takes place in the financial heart of an unnamed but Western metropolis. It could be the city of London or Wall Street or anywhere, summit leaders were told. Now, as the scenario unfolded, it emerged that the terrorists are from an unidentified global terror network, and they have stolen nuclear material from an unidentified country that had poorly secured its radiological and nuclear stockpiles. The bomb is being built in a clandestine laboratory with stolen uranium. It is an improvised explosive device, but deadly, and the clock is ticking. Hundreds of thousands of people could be about to die. Now, world leaders each had a computer tablet with touchscreen options to make one of four responses. These were designed to test their reaction to a threat that would threaten the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. A diplomatic source said, they had to give an answer on their own in real time, like a test. It put them on the spot. Should they inform the public or keep them in the dark? Should they work with other countries or stand alone? And how should they make the cold calculation of how to get a more sustainable human cost in terms of death. So just what is a sustainable cost, Barry? Now, the case of the nukes on the loose, this is a big deal. Remember last year we reported on the missing nukes from Dias Air Force Base, and then hours later, Senator Lindsey Graham was saying that there was potentially a, nukes could go off in North Carolina and really ramping up that fear there. 
Where are those missing nukes? Well, the answer is they've got them and they're holding them just like they've got that ace card. And it's the question is, will they play it? I mean, they've already proven that they don't care about the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people with 9-11 and countless wars. So what's it going to be to just pop off a nuke, kill hundreds of thousands of people, possibly wipe out Manhattan, if that means that they can now lock down the country and get New World Order in motion? So this that's the question there. That's the key, is just how many people can die while still sustaining this machine. And apparently a leader in the Ukraine thinks, you know, 8 million people could be nuked. She called for nuking the 8 million Russians who remained in the Ukraine, calling them outcasts. She said, just nuke them. Just nuke them like it's nothing. I mean, maybe she was making a crude joke, but these are the total mafioso crime warmongering elite that are running this world. And now they're basically playing a deadly game of who's going to set off the nukes first. So Obama is doing actually exactly what he was supposed to do when he was put in power, although poorly, according to Donald Rumsfeld, who says that um, a trained ape could do a better job at managing war, because that's what the Republicans want. They don't want a president who will actually stop war. They want a president who will be really good at managing it. So meanwhile, while they're ramping up all of this war, they're also wasting billions of taxpayer dollars on the TSA. Talk about a trained monkey being able to do a job better than them. Here, they've got the TSA controlling and policing Americans daily at airports. Now they're rolling them out at games and things like that. But we're finding out that the billion dollars they spent to train these TSA baboons to read body language as an indicator of terrorist activity Turns out there is no terrorism tell in an airport line. And surprise, the TSA's behavior detection officers were a waste of taxpayer funds. A billion dollars worth of taxpayer funds, just like all of those x-ray machines that they had to just throw into some closet somewhere because they didn't work. Now, as the Government Accountability Office points out, fewer than 1% of the more than 30,000 passengers a year who are identified as suspicious end up being arrested, and that not one single offense has been linked to terrorism, because it's not about fighting terrorism. It is about controlling and policing Americans. But of course, this behavior analysis program just gives the TSA an excuse to roll out their contrived security theater and grope and grab anyone who they think looks shifty because it takes one to know one. But now, how far will this go, this need to control everyone? It's going to our schools now. Our children are being trained to obey. And when is it going to finally be time to say enough? Well, perhaps this next story might be enough to enrage you. This is the one a Colorado girl shaved her head to support a friend who went bald due to cancer treatment. Well, she was suspended from school for violating the dress code. Cameron Renfro decided to shave her head to support her friend Delaney Clements, who was undergoing chemotherapy for stage four cancer. But school officials barred her from returning to her public charter school until her hair grew back. Now, the school president, Norton Bremen, stated that shaved heads were not allowed by the dress code policy, which was created to promote safety, uniformity, and a non-distracting environment for the school's students. Now, Delaney Clement's mom said, however, the girl made a brave decision to shave her hair in order to show her friend that she wasn't alone, adding that it builds character. Absolutely, it builds character, but that's not what schools are for. They are about building conformity and total weaklings who will just obey the state. I mean, it's not like this girl shaved her head because she's a gangbanger. How far will the schools go? This isn't the first time that they've gone above and beyond idiocracy. They suspended a boy who pointed his finger like a gun. It's getting out of control, but this is where you know, how far is it going to have to go until we say enough? Basically, we're just being prompted and told to be happy and be content and it's okay. And that's the secret to getting everything you want in life is to just smile and everything will be okay. But that is a farce 
because happy people do not start revolutions. And that is exactly what they know. They want us to just pretend like we're happy and everything's okay, but it's time to get outraged and it's time to stand up. And that's exactly what happened at this school. There was so much backlash for what this school did to this poor girl who was just being brave that the school was forced to allow her to return. <clears throat> now, these are just tools that they use, tools of intimidation and fear, and they're hoping that you'll just cower to them and you will just obey. And if you do challenge them, then you're gonna be racist, perhaps. Their tools are intimidation and fear, and they use these tactics just hoping that you will cower and obey. And if you do challenge them, you are a racist, or they'll send their goons after you to send you to a federal prison for things that they do every day, crimes they do every day. Here we have Dinesh D'Souza, who's the acclaimed writer, filmmaker, and staunch Obama critic. He was notoriously indicted on violating campaign finance laws, which is total bull because, let's be honest, his only crime was that he got caught. Well, D'Souza has now taken advantage of Obama's incessant need to promote his agenda via Hollywood by turning Obama's Between Two Ferns appearance on its head to promote his new movie. I'm Dinesh D'Souza, sitting in for Zach Galifianakis. Unfortunately, Zach's spider bites have taken a turn for the worse. Our thoughts and prayers are with you, Zach. Thoughts and prayers. We were supposed to have the leader of the free world, Vladimir Putin. But he was busy, so welcome for the second week in a row, Barack Obama. Good to be with you. Let's talk about something serious for a moment. Former senior IRS official Lois Lerner is being investigated for targeting conservative groups. What do you plan to do about it? We'll probably pardon another turkey. Wait, did you just call her a turkey? We, we do that every Thanksgiving. Well, if you're going to be handing out pardons, why don't we move on? Because I feel so bad about your crappy website, I'd like to offer you two tickets to the world premiere of my film, America. Can you make it? Seriously? I'm the President of the United States. What do you think? I'll put you down as Obama plus one. Why don't you show it to us right now? I don't have the whole film, but if you press that button, you can see the trailer. I'm gonna press this. Well, coming up, lawmakers in New Jersey and Rhode Island are experiencing a lot of pushback from Second Amendment activists, including our own correspondent, Dan Badandi. And let me tell you, they are not happy about it. You stay classy, State Senator Miller. Now stick around, because we're gonna release the Kraken right after this. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Blocket Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect... 